Good morning. Welcome to Coffee with Pastor. This is, let's see, Tuesday morning, January the 24th of 2023. Good morning to you. As I mentioned, this is Coffee with Pastor. I have my cup of coffee right here. I have my copy of the Word of God open to Hebrews chapter 10. And I know I say this every day, but please join us there. Follow along with us as we read, and we will get more out of it. Our mind will retain more of what we read, and it's just a good habit to get into to have your Bible open. Let me turn our attention to the bad dad joke. What do you call a girl who's just come back from the beach? What do you call a girl who has just come back from the beach? Sandy. So anyway, good morning to you. I trust that it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful day. It is the day that the, God, the Lord has given to us. We shall be glad and rejoice in it. And I trust that today is going to find you doing just that. And um, again, I've mentioned to you, Hebrews is one of my favorite books of the Bible. And I hope it is yours as well. Just again, encouraging Christians to hang on, to stay true, to remain steadfast in their confession of faith, as he, as Paul will refer to Jesus Christ as being better than everything that has preceded him, and by the way, better than anything that we will ever see. And so it is about nine o'clock, and so we're going to go ahead, we're going to have a word of prayer, and then we will read um, one of the longer chapters of the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10. Let's pray together. Good morning, Lord. It is a joy to come into your presence and to realize that, again, you are God. Not a king, not a president, not a legislature. You are God. And Lord, we do indeed come into your presence, and we want to report for duty. We want to be available for your work. We want to be used of you in any way that you deem necessary. And Father, we do a desire that our lives would count for your honor and for your glory. So therefore, Father, we ask that you would guide us each step of the way today. That the things that are upon our minds, the concerns that we have, are the very same as the things that are on your mind and the concerns you have. As far as reaching people who are lost, as far as encouraging people that are discouraged. And Father, use us. Lord, you already know our state. You know our frame. You know our circumstances. You know the things we struggle with. You know our limitations. And Father, as we come into your presence, just as we are, we just pray that you would use us. Give us strength where strength is needed. Give us courage where courage is needed. Comfort where comfort is needed. And Father, again, glorify yourself. May your people be blessed and to see that blessing today. Father, as we open up your word and as we read it again today, we ask that you would use it in our hearts and lives. Don't leave us the way we are. Change us. Change us into what you would have us to be. And Father, again, just thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for giving us the privilege to be able to read your word, to understand your word. We pray that your spirit would be our teacher. We pray that he would apply the word to specific areas in our lives. And Father, again, we just want to say thank you for all that you have done. 
We ask these things in Christ's most blessed name. Amen. Hebrews. Book of Hebrews in chapter 10. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering would thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering, oftentimes, the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Now, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us, through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall be thought worthy who have trodden under foot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite under the Spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. 
but call to remembrance the former days in which, after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of affliction. Partly while she were made a gazing stock, both of, by reproaches and afflictions, and partly while she became companions of them that were so used. For ye had compassion of me in my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come, will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Beloved, you know, the message that we try to give you every day is the very message Paul is bringing across to his readers. Be faithful. Hang in there. The fact is that Christ's sacrifice was better than they all, than all of them. The priests offered over and over and over again the same sacrifice Jesus Christ came to offer himself as an offering for sin once for all. Hold fast, therefore, that confidence. Don't pull back. Because one day, he that shall come will come. What a glorious truth that is. And I believe we're closer than ever to the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he takes his people home. So, beloved, let me again encourage you. Be faithful. Be everything God wants you to be today. You can do that. Focus on today. Don't allow yourself to become someone else's excuse for turning away from the gospel. Serve God. Beloved, have a great day. Remember, God loves you, and so do we. And until tomorrow, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.